I'm here in Nantucket, and in Nantucket you always have fantastic speakers. And uh, yesterday we had a presentation of John Holdren, and John Holdren is a climate change uh, expert, and he was the uh, served as President Barack Obama's chief science and technology advisor and the director of the White House Office of Science and Technology. Uh, John, um, yesterday you uh, talked about the uh, the climate change and, and all the presentations are online. I will put a note into uh, where you can see a fantastic presentation of him at Brown and the slides will be there. But if we review quickly on climate change, w what do we know now? Well, what we know, first of all, is the climate is changing in ways that cannot be explained by natural influences. In fact, it's changing in the opposite direction from the current effects of natural influences. Natural influences uh, would be cooling the Earth, mm -hmm. except that the human influences have overwhelmed them. Yeah, we're, going for an ice, uh, we're going for an ice age, we but we, we, we fixed that. We're going for an ice age, but we fixed it and we overcompensated because the heat trapping gases, carbon dioxide, methane, and others are warming the Earth far more than the natural forces are cooling it. And yeah. so the world is warming. It's warming unevenly so that the far north, the Arctic, is warming two to five times faster than the average. The centers of continents are warming faster than the average. The West Antarctic ice sheet is warming faster than the average. And the fact that it is uneven is affecting the patterns of climate all around the world, not just the average temperature, but the circulation of the atmosphere, the winds, the ocean, all changing yep. uh, under climate change. That is pretty much, and then you, you have a lot of slides where you basically describe that and also the consequences. It was the nice what you said. It's like the body of the, uh, the your body. If your body goes, uh, temperature goes from 37 degrees Celsius to 39, you are a big trouble, yeah, and that's also exactly. with the earth. Yeah. What that tells you, when the temperature goes up a little bit, whether it's your body or the planet, mm -hmm. it's telling you there's a big problem in the underlying system. The temperature is just a crude index of what's going on in that very complicated system. Okay. Now the second thing we know without question mm -hmm. is that it is human activities that have caused this. It's fossil fuel burning and land use change. There is absolutely no scientific doubt about that. The third thing we know is that there is already significant damage being done by climate change. We know that it's not just a problem for our children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. We're already seeing increases in deadly heat waves, in large wildfires, in powerful storms, in lightning strikes, in torrential downpours and floods, in the bleaching of coral reefs, in the loss of biodiversity. Yeah. All of these impacts of climate change are already happening, and they are very well matched to what is expected from the kinds of changes in climate that human activities have produced. Yeah. That is, the timing, the spatial distribution, what we call the fingerprint of these different impacts matches. It's very clear who is uh, who's guilty, so and it's us. Who's and, it's yeah. and it's clear that harm is already being done. It's also clear that more harm will be done before we can stop it. Even if we act aggressively, you cannot stop climate change in its tracks. Okay. What do we know? That's basically the modeling. What's yeah. going to happen in the next uh, 10 to 20 years? Well, what we know is the temperature will continue to rise, although we have some control over how fast. If we take aggressive action to reduce the offending emissions and to reduce the land use practices that are contributing to the addition of these heat trapping gases, then the rise can be relatively slow. And perhaps we could stop the temperature increase at about 2 degrees Celsius above the pre-industrial level. Right now we're at about one degree Celsius above the pre-industrial level and we're already, as I've mentioned, seeing very serious consequences. So it's not that two degrees is safe, no. but it's much safer than three or four. Yeah. Or like you said, yesterday said, five, six, yeah. seven, eight degrees. And a world that is four or five degrees C, never mind six or eight degrees C, warmer than pre-industrial would be an unrecognizable world. It would be impossible to work outside in the warmest part of the year in many parts of the world, impossible to do agriculture, construction, fisheries, because to work outside would mean heat stroke and dying. Mm -hmm. uh, it would be uh, a world in which much of the biodiversity is gone, in which food production would have dropped. It would be a world in which sea level has gone up uh, in this century maybe as much as two meters uh, at the high end. 
for the Netherlands, that would be quite dramatic. Yeah. And it would be quite dramatic for coastlines all around the world. If you look at what one meter of sea level rise means for the east coast of the United States, it would be devastating. So uh, we have the choice. The biggest uncertainty about the future of climate change is not uncertainty in the science. It's uncertainty about what society decides to do. If we do a lot, maybe we can keep it to two degrees Celsius increase. If we don't do a lot, we're certainly looking at three or four and maybe five or six, and that would be a disaster. I would say that uh, please take a look at that presentation because you went into that in great detail and also what we can do, uh, what we can do ourselves to, to stop that and get into the two degrees and uh, from all the different actors. I want to I want to go into uh, first I want to ask you you started in 1969 okay on the to talking about this describe 69 and what happens now I mean how did people uh, how is the uh, awareness how has it changed and is it real awareness or is it just that people are talking how 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 much do we feel really this urgency at the moment well first of all in 1969 scientists were talking about this issue uh, but no one else was and uh, with a few exceptions. That is, uh, in the 60s, there was a report uh, by what was called the President's Science Advisory Committee uh, to the President of the United States that said that continuing additions of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere from human activities would eventually change the climate and that this could be disastrous. But there was no public conversation about this. Nobody we have a report from Shell. You know, we have a little oil yeah. company, yes. and the, 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 the research center of uh, Shell right. also published this uh, pu yeah. published an article about th that this was going to, uh, you know, th we could not be able to reverse it. That that report was later <laughs> disconnected, but, re but uh, uh, emerged again. No, very famously, very famously, a, a Swedish scientist named Arrhenius wrote a paper in 1895. Uh, predicting that a doubling of the carbon dioxide concentration of the atmosphere would increase the temperature of the Earth by about five degrees Celsius, 1895. Okay. But again, nobody but How many scientists parts per million did we have at that moment? That. Uh, oh, at, at, at that moment in 1895, it was uh, not much above the pre-industrial level. It was maybe uh, 290, 295 parts per million. Now we're at about 415 parts per million. Uh, the number that represents a doubling from the pre-industrial level is 550 parts. When will we reach that? And when we have this? Uh, no, when we have, we have conditions like now. The, the 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 big uncertainty is whether we will do anything. But if we don't do anything, we're going to have 550 by 2040 or so. Um, and, and so what, you, what you're saying, it was scientists talking about it. And how would you describe it? How would you describe it now if we talk about 2018? Well, today. Uh, what polls show is that in the United States, about 70% of the public now believe that the climate is changing, that it's already doing harm, that people are responsible, and we need to do something about it. 70%. Including Republicans. In, in, in all, th this is polls of all voters, and that includes Republicans. The fraction in the Congress of the United States among the Republicans is about half that. That is, it's about 35 percent of Republicans in the Congress will admit, at least. More may know it, but only about a third, a little more than a third, will admit it. But in the public, the percentage is higher. The problem is that this challenge is not very high on the priority list of most people. So if you ask them a different question, if you say, what are you most worried about? What keeps you awake at night? Jobs, income getting their kids through college, health care, retirement, yep. crime, drugs. Uh, so Much, much more closer so to the so chest are much more important. So from the political standpoint today, the problem about getting political action on climate change is that it is not a high enough priority for most people. There is a dedicated group that's uh, probably about 30 percent as opposed to 70 percent who rank climate change higher and are the people who are driving the public discussion. They're driving movements like America's Pledge, We're Still In, which is the collection of businesses and non-governmental organizations and universities and cities and states that say, even though President Trump is withdrawing from the Paris Accords, we're still in. 
and that's again th that's what you might call the hardcore what we see in europe as the uh, that, that as the positive thing which comes out of it that a lot of people just stood up and said hey we're going to do this because of course we, we in europe we started in 2000 with the pledge of the two percent that we're slowly taking action and we're really in the netherlands we're really now planning the 50 percent reduction of co2 yeah. and the 90 percent reduction and it's in the government and it's in the uh, it's in the official papers etc